Young soldier talks to old soldier, then he faces trolls. Let's go. It feels like the old vet is actually a man and the young lad is a pussy. No offense, but he kept talking about mental health and BS. The old man served in World War II and did not complain once. If you can't handle death in a war, then don't go in the army. I don't know where to start with this. Well, I got that one. Once I was out of the military at a party, the first thing I'd say to this guy is tell the trolls to give him this. The second thing I'd say was I had somebody at a cocktail party say, well, people go in the military should understand they want to die. Well, who at 17 that signs a contract understands shit? Hi, my name's Steve Nichols. I'm a veteran. Six months ago, I yeah. sat down with an older veteran on the gap. When soldiers come back home, someone looks at you the wrong way. You're already in fight mode. It's been 12 years, I'm still in fight mode now. Well, you've been through quite a lot, son, haven't you? We compared our stories and our lives, and it's created a massive response online. There's questions that we had on the gap that um, I didn't want to answer because I knew they'd trigger me. They call it PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I don't like to call it a disorder. Ali, it's like calling something a disease. Well, I think why I said trigger him is probably multiple things, but what would trigger me is if somebody were trolling me online saying, oh, you're being a wuss. You should have known better when you went in. Those people were not in the military. You know, it's like saying you should have known better when you got behind the wheel of the car, you were hit by the semi, now you're tra are traumatized by driving. Yeah, you go in, you watch a lot of television, you think you know, but you don't ever know to experience it. And even if you don't think the guy's got the medal for it, we do more for people we don't even know. He's from the UK, taking refugees from all over the world and pull out the red carpet. Give the vets a break. Um, it is an injury now. Um, going forward, I'm in a much better place where I'm happy to talk about anything. Now it's like, well, me answering those questions could help someone else. How can you say you suffered major mental health and then you say you missed the firefights? Because, <laughs> that's a good question actually. Men I'm gonna chime in there before he finishes. You know, it's like the kid that was in the abusive relationship, right? They're kind of used to it. There's a certain adrenaline rush, abusive father, whatever. So he says he misses the firefights, probably because there's a multiple things. It's hard to say why you miss something like that. Is it the camaraderie you felt that led up to it? Is it the adrenaline rush? Is the feeling of accomplishment that you lived, right? There's multiple things going on here. Mental health, like I talked about, is trauma to the brain. Uh, PTSD is trauma to the brain. Um, that trauma is caused by a traumatic event. The firefights were dramatic. The firefights, and this is going to upset a lot of people, the firefights were fun. It's the biggest rush you'll ever get. It's what we love. My trauma comes from failing my lads. My trauma comes from seeing a lot of dead bodies that should be dead. The younger man looked like he looked deaf in the eyes. Yeah, so they have that survivor's guilt, right? And that could be whether you lost a child to drowning. It's nothing different. I think there's been, the media has overdone this where people just get fed up with it, right? So some people are just sick of hearing about PTSD, trauma. I get it, right? But we send people off to fight. We want them to have an outlet, right? All the bitching and moaning we hear on social media, the least we can do is listen to somebody who did something. We in America roll bend over backwards for people coming here, legally or not, and we listen to all their stories and plights. But yet, as soon as this guy complains, everybody says, well, just suck it up, buddy. You should know. You should have known better. I would normally say no, I don't answer this because of the answer that I want to give, but I'm going to give it a go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to give it a go at answering it. Um, looking deaf in the eyes, a lot of people will think that that means like on a war film or something like that when you're fighting the enemy and the enemy's firing at you or the, the enemy's coming at you in one way, shape or another and you think that's death. I'm looking death in the eyes, I'm fighting the death. It's to me, it's not. Looking death in the eyes was looking at my, my lads injured. 
Um, dead. That was looking death in the eyes. Why does that even matter, right? You say, okay, you know what's going to happen. Well, you don't. Let's say you're 18, 20 years old. You haven't had a lot of death around you. In particular, you don't think that young people are going to die. You know, when you're young, you're invincible. And you got guys that have, you've trained with, you think are tough, you think you're going to outdo the enemy, and they die from an IED or they die from their own mistake. It's hard to conceptualize for anybody young. In particular, just because they haven't faced typical death, you know, old people. Now we're dealing with young, healthy people that you just don't think are going to die. Often to see them go or not being able to help them because you want to be on the, you want to be on the stretcher. You don't want them there. You'd rather, when you see your men or your, your lads get injured, you instantly say, I wish I was them. Especially with Afghan. I was 23 when I was in Afghan. Um, and lads that were getting injured and killed were 18, 19. So even though they're a few years younger than me, they were still mine, my kids, if you like, and I needed to protect them. Um, and when you can't protect them. For people who criticize this guy, they clearly weren't veterans or have suffered a traumatic loss. I don't care if you're a veteran, you suffered a traumatic loss in this type of fashion. You understand there's a lot of emotions moving around, especially when they're your subordinates. Not even the subordinate factor, but they're people you sleeping with, you're digging the holes with, you're laughing with, you know their family, their friends. You're spending a lot of time together. This isn't like somebody you know from school. These people that he's probably spending all of his waking hours with and all of a sudden they die. It's traumatic for anybody, no less the way they die. That's what death is. What is truly worse than the pits of hell? It leaves men like this at rock bottom. Their heads are all over the place. They're afraid, anxious, and depressed. PTSD is the most devastating mental health disorder by far. Rock bottom. When I was at my worst, I was always drinking. Um, that's why I pretty much left the country because I was a massive burden on my family um, in my eyes. Um, I didn't want them to see what I was becoming. So with the drinking and the fighting and the arguing and everyone was an enemy, everything was a threat. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it, it resulted in uh, a few suicide attempts. The first one was driving. Now you hear this from a lot of guys, they think it would just be easier to check out and it could be stress from his PTSD, stress from life you say it's like a break from this well the break becomes drinking right there's not a positive outlet he doesn't have a new mission That's why most of these guys when they get out they need a new mission something to keep them very busy now the problem becomes what do they take as serious as they did before you know they were in charge of equipment men things and they go all of a sudden they're the amazon warehouse delivering packages they feel like it's not the same serious of a mission so you have to have something for men like this. And I've talked to a lot of them over the years, you know, Vietnam vets, you know, guys from several different wars that have PTSD. And the best thing I've found is that when they have something, a goal to strive for. A lot of times guys like this, they get out, they have start a career, have a family, that's their mission. And once that's over, they could be in their 40s. That's when they really hit rock bottom. Hey, my car, I uh... 90 miles an hour, taking my belt off and going to a sandstone wall. And I went, I hit the windscreen. That was my first attempt. And that just made me more, more angry because it didn't work. That's rock bottom. That was my rock bottom. Had a housemate who served in Afghanistan. He used to wake up screaming, came home from work one day to find a suicide note because he couldn't take it anymore. I visit his grave every year, still gets to me, I couldn't help him. Um, I can relate to that because I lost two very good friends from suicide, 2018. Uh, John Paul Finnegan and Kev Williams. Kev Williams went first. I didn't speak to him for two days because 
Those just didn't. I've lost some friends to suicide far after they were out of the military. And they got out. They were busy, contractors, families. And all of a sudden, the music stopped. They didn't really have a mission anymore. They'd accomplished everything. And they felt like they were a horse out to pasture. They kind of finished it all. And their mind was racing. What do they do next? Of course, there was the drinking. You didn't know. They seemed happy when you saw them. They were functional drunks. And the next thing you know, you're at a funeral. And then when I come back, I come back online, he was, he was gone. Um, <clears throat> I blame myself uh, for his passing because when he needed me, I wasn't there. But then when I tried to commit suicide, it doesn't matter who I thought about, who was speaking to me or who was there, I wanted to go. And I didn't want people to get upset over it because my life was worthless. Now, my life isn't worthless. Sometimes I have thoughts, but I don't act upon them. My life isn't worthless because I've got a family to look after. I've got things that people rely on me to do. And that's an important thing he's got right now is a family to look after. I was saying before, when the family's grown, there's nothing left to do, then what? That's where these things become problematic for guys in their 40s. And if they don't have a mission, they'll go back to being depressed. And it could be they lost a friend, they got a TBI, you know, brain injury. Several things can cause this problem. For that reason, I won't go anywhere now. All right, this comment, his name says it all, that he likes to play games. Um, so obviously he's a, he's a veteran of the PlayStation. Uh, it feels like the old vet is actually a man and the young lad is a pussy. No offence, but he kept talking about mental health and BS. So mental health, BS. The old man served in World War II and did not complain once. If you can't handle death in a war, then don't go in the army. I don't know where to start with this. Yeah, I kept talking about mental health because mental health is killing our forces, it's killing our people. So, you know, military and civilians. So when you've got, the old man is actually a man, doesn't talk about it once. The reason he doesn't talk about it is because maybe he doesn't know how to talk about it. And the people like him that are my age that don't talk about mental health because they don't want to be a pussy. That comment is classic of the internet. Somebody who's a gamer sitting on the rass, never done anything, it's gonna intellectualize it. I can tell you this for a fact, a grandfather of World War II, an uncle injured in Vietnam. This has always been around. How it was addressed has changed. They're talking about it, right? There weren't as many psych meds in the past. People just drank it away, died a young death. Now people are living longer, and it's come up. Not to mention, these guys today, people don't realize this, they've been in more combat than any other generation, period. I don't know about him in specifically, but you could have guys in four or five tours of combat and it's not like you're taking objective moving forward. You're sitting there day in and day out grinding and you're in a meat grinder where people are dying and it seems like a pointless cause. Rules of engagement change daily. It's a different time and people need to understand, especially gamer douchebags, it's not quite as cut and dry. And until you've been there, just stay in your damn lane. They then suffer with it and then they kill themselves because they think that they're being a pussy by talking about it and all that BS. So to blow my own trumpet, to blow my own bugle and blow smoke up, I'm the opposite to a pussy because I'm actually talking about it and because I want to help people become stronger. No, I can't handle death in a war. In a war. And if you can bring me one person in the whole of the British Army that can say to me, I can handle death, in, the, in, in war and good on you because they're full of shit. because death is an unnatural thing to witness and to see it a human body in such have I replied to that on YouTube by the way because I'm going to go on there and I'm going I'm to give him <laughs> I would give him a piece of advice don't waste your time these trolls love that they're never going to understand they can't get in the military because they've been on ADD meds since they were eight they're fat. I'm going to stereotype because if somebody actually thought through what they typed first, they wouldn't write that stupid kind of bullshit. <laughs> um, why is the younger guy dressed like he's about to work out when now I had cargo pants on and I was covered in oil from work? So, <laughs> cheers. Any more?
I'm on a roll now. Have some respect, take off your cap. Now we're going bald, sorry. You're missing the point, you know what I mean? You're not like sitting there going, oh, this is amazing. It's, it's great that these two veterans have like from... Hey, they worry about the cap and the dress. Why are you bring up the tattoos? Why don't you, you know, it's a different generation, right? He's a young guy. Back when the older fellow was around, you dressed differently. Does that make him any less? No. If you look back even to War One vets, they would dress differently. You wouldn't say anything. You brought in a Vietnam veteran. He may be dressed completely different. It's specific to the individual. So stereotyping like this is just the internet in a nutshell. Where people can type anything they want, would never say a damn thing to your face. Different generations have come together and chatting and they might be helping each other or whatever. It's like, oh my God, I don't like his jacket. Well, this is in vogue, swivel, you know what I mean? Lizards. I don't think the old chap knew what mental health was. Uh, I completely disagree with, with that. I think that's a load of rubbish, to be honest. Yes, John does know what mental health is because he's been fighting it in his own mind. His own, he's been fighting his own demons. And if you watched the video he talked about, it took him up to 40 years to forgive the Germans. 40 years of your life is a long time to be in anger with someone. Like I've only been angry, in anger with not with my enemy, but with myself for 12 years. 12 years of hating myself and loathing myself. 40 years of your life is a long time. Sorry, that's just to wind me up, that is. Both heroes, amazing for them to talk and potentially help people going through PTSD or other mental health issues as a result of war. If you got PTSD issues, you got any kind of mental health issue, veteran or not, the worst thing is going to get people to not listen to you is do nothing about it and just complain. He's doing something about it. If you sit there and bitch and moan, after a while, people tune you out. Because there is so many people that are just whiners that you don't know when someone's serious. It's hard to take people serious anymore because you've got so many Karens that go on and on and on. Or people who just complain because they couldn't get a soy latte and had to wear a mask. I like to think they went to the pub afterwards uh, yeah, we uh, we stayed in touch. Uh, we keep it in touch. I spoke to him on VE Day, and uh, we're, we're we're just organising to, uh, to meet up very soon, and uh, hopefully go to the pub. Uh, whether I can keep up with him, I don't know. Um, there is a lot more to talk about. We're gonna cry. Let's cry. We wanna get angry. Let's get angry, but we need to get it out. You know what I mean? I think venting and talking is the best. I think we'd all be better served to give people the benefit of the doubt. In particular, someone who served their country, in this case, the UK, put his name on the dotted line, spend his time. If he's trying to work through, we should support them and not try to find fault with everything he does.